Kubernetes greatly simplifies the process of creating and managing applications composed of multiple containers. It does so by providing a number of built-in solutions to common problems. Let's go over some of Kubernetes' primary features to see what it can do for you. When you're dealing with many different services, you don't want to have to worry about where each one should be deployed. Thankfully, Kubernetes automatically schedules containers for you. Furthermore, Kubernetes may reschedule a container from one node to another to increase resource utilization. This means that you get more work out of the same number of machines, and that saves money. Note that it would be very difficult for a human operator to achieve similar results. In some circumstances, you may want to control where containers are scheduled to, e.g., this container should only run on a machine with an SSD. Well, fear not, because you can exert quite a lot of control over where containers get scheduled, if you want to do so. Kubernetes is very flexible. When you have a bunch of services that need to communicate with each other, it's critical that they're able to find each other first. This is especially true because containers are automatically scheduled and may, potentially, get moved around. Thankfully, Kubernetes makes it easy for containers to communicate with each other. You'll see what I mean in a bit. When you have a bunch of replicated services, you'll usually want to slap a load balancer in front of them to spread the traffic among the replicas. Well, Kubernetes has both OSI Layer 4 and Layer 7 load balancers. With only a few lines of configuration code, you can set up a load balancer in just a few seconds. One of my personal favorite features is Kubernetes' ability to self-heal. Kubernetes automatically monitors containers and reschedules them if they crash or are terminated when they shouldn't. Kubernetes will also reschedule containers in the event that the node that they're living on fails. But wait, there's more. You also have the means to set up container health checks. They give Kubernetes the ability to detect when a container is sick, even though it hasn't crashed. Kubernetes will then restart that container for you. No more three in the morning damage control calls from work. At least, not while Kubernetes is on duty. Sometimes, a containerized service experiences more demand than it can handle. The good news is that Kubernetes has the ability to manually or automatically scale up that container. What I mean is that Kubernetes will create additional replicas of that container to help service the high request load. You no longer need a team of ops engineers to spend hours or days manually deploying and configuring additional replicas in order to scale up the application. In other words, Kubernetes makes scaling up or down easy. A highly available service can't afford any downtime, even when you need to upgrade something. Fortunately, Kubernetes has the ability to perform rolling updates. This is where old containers are judiciously swapped out for new versions of the same containers, all without disrupting the service provided by the running application. Best of all, it's no more difficult than executing a single command on the terminal. There are times where you'll need to back out an upgrade that you just applied to your cluster. For instance, perhaps you found a bug, or perhaps you released a new feature prematurely. The reasons don't really matter. Thankfully, Kubernetes allows you to revert to a previously deployed set of containers, and there's no disruption or downtime in your cluster. Container images are a bad place to store secret information, like API keys, passwords, and private crypto keys. Anyone who has access to an image can readily extract data stored in that image. Images are basically open books from a security standpoint. Thus, container clusters need some secure place to store secret information. Kubernetes solves this problem with an object called a secret, whose purpose is to store secret configuration information. This data can be distributed to containers at runtime without having to bake the information directly into them. One of Kubernetes' most important benefits is the fact that it abstracts away the underlying cluster hardware. As a result, Developers don't need to worry about the number of machines in the cluster, the types of machines, their varying capabilities, the cluster network topology, or anything else like that. Kubernetes provides an abstraction layer over all of those details so that a developer can focus on maintaining and improving their application. 
On the flip side, administrators no longer have to worry about which applications are on the cluster or their dependencies. Instead, cluster admins can focus on things like maintaining the health of the underlying cluster and making sure that all of the latest security patches have been applied to the host machines. Kubernetes isn't without a few drawbacks. Complaint number one is that Kubernetes is a lot to learn. This is somewhat true, but it's not as bad as some people make it out to be. For starters, Kubernetes is designed to handle many of the most common problems that afflict distributed containerized applications. Thus, there are quite a few features to learn about, but that's why I created this course. I wanted there to be a thorough and yet concise way to learn Kubernetes and learn it fast. Some people argue that Kubernetes is overkill for small applications, but I don't agree. First, small containerized applications face many of the same problems and have many of the same requirements as large containerized applications. Second, while Kubernetes has a number of features, you don't have to use all of them on every cluster. Use what you need and don't worry about the rest. One of Kubernetes' biggest drawbacks is the fact that it's non-trivial to set up, but there are some mitigating factors. When you need access to a single node development cluster, a good option is Minikube. It is quick and easy to install. A production-ready alternative is to use a hosted Kubernetes solution. Companies like Google, Docker, and Microsoft have hosted Kubernetes as one of their cloud products. This eliminates the need to install Kubernetes on your own or have to worry about cluster health. Your final option is to install Kubernetes on your own. That process is outside the scope of this course. Now you know some of Kubernetes' key benefits. Add in the benefits of containers, and I think you can begin to see why Kubernetes has become so popular. In fact, it's grown so popular that companies like Docker and CoreOS, which only used to offer their own container orchestration software, now sell hosted Kubernetes solutions. The point is that Kubernetes is a great investment of your time.